What's up guys, Dave here. If you're interested in resetting the throttle position sensor on your bike, this is a 2020 Honda Grom, but it may apply to many other models, including the Honda Monkey. Uh, we're going to, you're gonna take the cap off of your little service connection here, and you're gonna jump the wires, you got uh, green and blue, and you're gonna jump them together basically with a, you can use a paper clip or a hard wire of some sort, just make sure that it's connected them together okay and then down here this sensor you're going to disconnect the sensor the, the harness from the sensor itself and we're going to jump those two wires as well to remove the clip for the harness you just press on this tab right here notice how it pulls away from it right there and just wiggle it and pull it off then we're going to put our paper clip and jump these two together. Okay, so take your either hard wire or, or a good strong paper clip like this. Connect them together, one in one hole, one in the other hole. Do a little wiggling, you know, make sure that it gets in there. Okay. Now we'll come up to the ignition switch. All right. Make sure you got it jumped there and jump there. Make sure your kill switch is in the run position. We do not touch the throttle this time. And now, as soon as we turn the key on, the check engine light is going to flash pretty quickly. As soon as it starts flashing, you want to remove the jumper down at the sensor at the bottom. Okay, so switch on, watch it. Starts flashing. Pull the jumper. Starts flashing fast. That means it was completed. Notice if it's starting to flash fast like that, that means everything was completed properly. Shut her back down, reconnect everything, remove your jumper wire over on the side. Remove that guy. And we want to do all this while the engine is stone cold. Remember that. Anytime you're doing any resetting of electronics and computers and whatnot on a vehicle, any kind of uh, EFI vehicle, make sure that the engine Everything is stone cold before you restart the vehicle. Okay? And now I don't know if it's the same on these, but I know in a lot of cars, after you remove your, uh, you know, remove all your jumpers, put all your stuff back together, put your sensor wire back in place. Make sure you hear it click in place. Uh, now I know on some cars, you um, you know we'll turn the key on, and you'll listen. You'll hear the uh, EFI, you know, make some noise. You'll hear it buzz a little bit. It'll also you may hear the uh, the butterfly of the of the uh, throttle body move a little bit. That means it's resetting its trim to a default setting. We want to wait for all that to occur. So that might take a full minute to do properly. So I'm just relating to this to what I've done on, on many cars doing like this. So let's do it now. Kill switch is on, run switch is on. We're not going to start the bike. Let's just listen. Now I'm going to wait for a good 30 seconds before I do anything. Okay, it's been about 30 seconds. Uh, next thing, when you start the bike, don't touch the throttle or anything. Just let it idle, just let it run. Uh, do that for a good couple of minutes, actually. Just let the bike idle on its own. Uh, you know, if your bike will not idle properly, you might need to install your little idle adjusting knob, which is a common, you know, upgrade item on this bike. I got previous videos on that on my, on my channel. 
Anyway, kill switch on, no throttle. Let's just fire it up and see what happens. Okay, I'm going to build my idle speed a little bit. The uh, aftermarket idle adjuster is quite handy to have. This little knob right here replaces the stock idle adjuster screw, which is on the other side of the throttle body, and it's you know it's not the easiest thing to adjust on this bike manually. So I do kind of recommend, uh, but make sure you look at my previous videos on some slight caveats on installing that adjuster. Anyway, we're going to let the bike idle on its own, you know, for a good couple of minutes. And uh, then we'll go from there. Now, this is the same on any fuel-injected vehicle. You know, once you restart it after resetting everything, you turn the key on or you turn your ignition on or you press your, uh, your push button on your car, you know, push it to the on position and you'll hear things resetting and recalibrating and that sort of thing then you'll crank it up just let it idle for a good five minutes and then after it's you know getting warmed up then you can go ride it or drive it if it's a car go drive the car around very gently you know not romping on it just go drive it gently and nicely for you know gosh for for quite a while actually just drive it gently and uh, what you might notice is uh, it just starts doing things better. You know, on an automatic transmission car, it may start shifting better and smoother. Um, you may hear it just idling a little better, smoother, cleaner. I mean, it's really it really depends. You know, it's not gonna work for every single situation. But I have done this on uh, quite a few bikes and cars for that matter. There we go, they're starting to warm up. That's been just a couple of minutes. Showing about 1900 RPMs right there. So I'm at, and this is the first time I've done this to this particular bike, so I'm actually showing some improvement already for what it just showed me right there. So I'm very pleased so far. All right, we're gonna leave it about there, right around 18, 1900 RPMs. Let it continue warming up just sitting here so and if you're in your garage make sure you open your garage door and run a fan pointing out too so you don't die of carbon monoxide anyway we're not touching the throttle we're not doing anything you know we're just letting it idle and uh, anyway so that's pretty much it and uh, you know after you get out and just ride around some just ride gently ride carefully you might notice after uh, you know after maybe 10 15 miles after everything is fully warmed up, you might notice some improvements on various things, you know, as far as running of the bike. So, you know, try it out. You can't hurt anything. I know everyone asks a question, you know, uh, can I do it on this model, this year, this make? Just try it. Try it on any particular model. You're not going to harm anything. Just make sure it's all done with a stone cold engine. And uh, that's pretty much it. So, so uh, yeah. Check out other videos. We've got more stuff about this bike and other bikes, motocross bikes, Harley Davidsons, cruisers, uh, Ford Mustangs, Cadillac ATSV, Ford Taurus X, older Chevy trucks, Hummer H3, Alpha. You know, we got all kinds of stuff on our channel. So take a scan through it and you might find some stuff that you might like, actually. And make sure you Google Horsepower House. Uh, we got an eBay store, Amazon store, mostly related to parts and tools for power sport vehicles like this. So check it out. And my name is Biker Dave. Signing off. Y'all have a good day, and hope it works out. If you post, uh, you know, post a comment underneath if, of your experience with this. Hopefully, it'll work out for you. And uh, if anything we offer you in advice or whatever helps you out, make sure you click the thanks button under the video and shoot us a little donation. We'd really appreciate it and it helps us do more videos for you in the future. So you'll have a great day, we'll see you later.